Okay, this is section 4.3. We're investigating transformations of quadratics. So, <coughs> so far the only quadratic that you guys have really learned is uh, this one, y equals x squared. And the method that you've learned how to graph this is to make a table of values. So you put the chosen x values on the left, and then you, you sub in those x values into your equation to find out your y values. Okay, that'll give you a scatter plot that looks like this. Okay, these points here. So everyone should be able to follow along with that. I've chosen negative values just because I know that, that this particular quadratic is on both on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the y-axis. So I've chosen these values okay, to make this plot, this graph accordingly. If you notice with this quadratic, and this is a little bit kind of more into the course, a little bit more advanced, but I'm going to tell you a little uh, shortcut in a, in a method and how to graph this, okay? If you know the vertex, so the vertex in this particular case is a minimum point. We've learned the vertex is either a minimum or a maximum, depending on whether the parabola opens up or down. Okay, and I've also told you that uh, for the extent of this course and grade 11, you're only gonna be dealing with parabolas that either open straight up or open straight down. Okay, so you know that the, the vertex is either gonna be the lowest point or the highest point. If you have that vertex, okay, and in this particular case, we know the vertex is 0, 0, because when we plug in 0 for x, we get 0 for y. We don't have any points that are lower than 0. Okay, we can check that by going 1 to the right, it gets higher, and 1 to the left, it also gets higher. So if you know the vertex, we know that there's a step pattern to graph this. Okay, and what I mean by a step pattern is like this. Okay. Okay, and this step pattern, it tells you, it's a bit of a shortcut on how to graph these quadratics. Okay, the step pattern is 1, 3, 5. Okay, and it always goes in this order. And then we can make changes accordingly depending on the equation. But the, the only one you really need to remember is the standard one, which is 1, 3, 5. Okay, so this is y equals x squared. What that means is, for every x value that you move over 1, so the horizontal direction is always one unit. So we move over one, we move up one. Okay, so moving over one, move up one. This point is one, one. Okay, because we're coming from zero, zero. The next one, we're gonna move over one in the horizontal direction, moving over one, and we're moving up three. So we move over one and move up one, two, three. So we've added one to the x, so two, and we've added three to the y, so two comma four. And then finally, the last step, we're moving over 1 again, and this time we're moving up 5. Okay, so we move over 1, so our x goes to 3, and our y goes up 5 to 9. So 4 plus 5 is 9. And that will correspond to these points here. So we have 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and 3, 9. Okay, so it's a bit of a shortcut if you can remember this step pattern. You know the vertex, you know the step pattern, and that you're done. Okay, you can graph it, or you can always do a table of values like this. It's a little bit longer. Matthew. Um, is there a, like another pattern that is similar to that only instead of going up by 2, it goes up by 3 or 4? Yes, and I'm going to show you that soon. I see the next, the next example. Yeah. So, <coughs> sorry, the first example we're going to show is what we like to call a vertical translation. So you guys have got to be familiar with that term when I say to translate. Basically means to just move or shift, okay? But we have to use that word because it's part of our math, uh, our math vocabulary, and it's called translation. So when we add a number to the end, if you guys are doing your table of values, it makes sense that... If we add a number three here to the end, all we're doing is adding three more units to that y value. So if this is x squared, you're now adding three more units. So nine becomes 12, four becomes seven, uh, negative one becomes four. So do you see the y value has just increased by three. So again, we can do a table of values. We can just plug in the value and calculate our y values. Or we can realize that from our standard graph, we've just added three to the y values. So in effect, we've just raised this whole thing up three units, 
okay? Because all the x values stay the same, your y values now have just shifted up three units. Or how we call it is translated up three units, okay? So when we have a graph like this, this is our standard graph, y equals x squared. We've added three, so the whole graph just moves up three units, okay? And if you could realize that, that your vertex is just going to move up from 0, 0 to 0, 3, you can still do that step pattern here and get your points. Okay, so now from 0, 3, you're moving over 1, and you're going up 1. So this point becomes 1 was 3, now it's going to be 4. Okay, likewise, you're going to move over 1, so this point is going to be 2, and you're moving up 3. So it's going to be 7. Again, your step pattern be 1, 3, 5. So your last point is going to be 3 and 12. Okay, and you do the exact same thing in the negative direction. You move over 1, you move up 1. So this becomes negative 1, 4. You move over 1, you move up 3. Negative 2, 7. You move over 1, you move up 5. So negative 3. Well, okay, so that step pattern, if you can remember that, one, three, five, it's a shortcut. I'm teaching it now to you guys a little bit in advance. It's not in the textbook yet, but it definitely will help you guys moving forward if you can remember that. Or if you're uncomfortable with that step pattern, you can always do a table of values and you'll get the same answer. Any questions there? Okay, so therefore, our rule then. When we have an equation that looks like this, x squared plus k, we translate the original graph, which is this, y equals x squared, vertically k units. So whether it's positive or negative will dictate whether we go up or down. But you're making a vertical translation either up or down. Okay? If k is greater than 0, so it's positive, this is a positive sign here, then the graph is translated upward. So from 0 to 3. If k is less than 0, so k is negative, if we had an equation that looked like this, minus 2, then our graph would just move down 2 units. So your vertex would be there, and your graph would look like this. Okay, still opening up. Any questions there? Pretty simple. We're just adding or subtracting from the y values. All right. So changing the step pattern now. So this is when we have y is equal to, uh, we have a number now in front of x, okay? And this coefficient we have a special letter for, we call the letter a, okay? So that, that number, whatever it is in front of the x squared, is represented by the letter a. That's the coefficient of our x squared term. All right, so now again, using a table of values, I, I give arbitrary x values, again separating equally on the left and right side of the y-axis, and then I can just solve for those, so I'm plugging in negative 3 for x, negative 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, negative 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, negative 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, 0 times 0 is 0, etc. So there's one way to do it with a table of values. If we wanted to do a bit of a shortcut method, now, rather than using our step pattern of 1, 3, 5, we need to multiply that step pattern by 2. So it gets multiplied by the value of a. So now instead of the vertical stepping being 1, 3, 5, our vertical steps become 2, 6, 10. Okay, I just multiplied each one of these steps by that value of a, in this case it's 2. Okay, so having done that, I go from my vertex is still 0, 0, I'm moving over 1, I'm stepping up 2 now, so this new point becomes 1, 2. The next point I move over again, 1 in the x direction, so I have my x value of 2, but instead of moving up 3, I move up 6, so this becomes adding 6 to 2, so that becomes 8. And finally, my last point, which is up here, I move over 1 in the x direction again, but now I'm moving up 10. Okay, you see how quickly I'm able to figure out those points using that step pattern? 
Okay, but again, there's always that option to make a table of values and to plug it in accordingly. Okay, so we get a rule from this uh, <coughs> to graph y ax squared, we stretch or compress the graph by a factor of a. So when a is greater, uh, sorry, when a is greater than one, then we call this a stretch. Okay, and we call it a vertical stretch because if you look at this original graph, which is over here. It's actually a much wider graph. So here's the original graph. Okay, that's what the original graph looks like. This is y equals x squared. And the new graph is being stretched or pulled upward. When we think of stretching, think of grabbing the ends of the parabola and pulling up. Okay, that's what we call a vertical stretch. So that happens when the a value is greater than 1. Okay. Likewise, when we have a negative a value that is greater than negative 1, we also get a stretch, but this time the parabola opens down. Okay? So if, if a is, is negative, it opens down. So the parabola, parabola opens down. Right? If A is positive, then it opens up. And that should make sense because if it's negative here, we would just attribute negative signs to each one of these Y values, and then all the Y values would then just become negative, and your parabola would look like that. Okay? Any questions? Now, if A is between 0 and 1, or 0 and negative 1, so you can think of it like a fraction, a fraction less than 1, then what we get is a compression. So we get this sort of movement. So again, your step pattern, whatever it is, so let's say y is equal to 1 half x squared. Again, now you're going to multiply your step pattern of 1, 3, 5 by a half. Okay, so instead of going 1 over 1 up, you go 1 over 1 half up. And you'd go 1 over, not 3 up, but you'd go 3 over 2 up. So 1 and a half up. So you'd go there. And then you'd go 1 over, and instead of going 5 up, you'd go 5 and a half or 2 and a half. So 1, 2 and a half. So you get this compression. All right? So think of the, the graph being squished down. All right? Let me just erase this one. Okay, so so this graph here is called a vertical stretch. Vertical stretch. Y equals two x squared. And this graph here is called a vertical compression. It's when y is equal to one half x squared. Okay. Obviously, the lower the fraction, the more compressed you get, and the higher the a value, the more stretched you get. Okay. So y is equal to say let's let's say a hundred x squared. You can imagine it's going to look almost just like two lines straight up and down. It's going to be extremely extremely stretched. Okay. And you can also figure that out again by just doing a table of values, plugging in your values of x, and finding out what the value of y is. Any questions there? All right, last example. So we now have an example where we're talking about a translation, not vertically, but horizontally. So we're changing the x values of the graph as opposed to the y. And the way we do that is we include in brackets the translation we want to do to the x. So the tricky part about this is the direction of the translation is opposite to the sign. Okay. So if we have x minus 2, the translation of the graph, of the original graph, which is over there, it's actually going to be positive 2. So negative 2 in the actual equation you're translating the graph two units to the right. Okay, and you can see that when you actually do a table of values, plug in your x values, 
find out what your y values are, and can see that if you have negative 2 here, this graph actually moves over to positive 2 to the right, yeah? So basically, if it's in brackets, then it moves on the x-axis, and if it's not, then it moves on the y-axis? That's right, okay. yeah. Okay, and in y, it goes the direction of the sign. So if it's positive 3, it goes up. If it's negative 3, it goes down. Whereas in the, in the horizontal direction, it goes the opposite of the equation. When it's in brackets, it's negative 2. It's going to actually move two units to the right. Matthew? How would you have it on the uh, negative side? Because uh, after you subtract x minus 2, even it results in a negative number, it would be squared. Yeah? So here, you can see. Like, we'll plug in the value of x here, right? Negative 3. Negative 3 minus 2 is negative 5. Squared is 25. Okay, but just how would you get uh, the graph, the vertex to be on the left side? The vertex would be on the left? No, the vertex is going to be here. 0, i oh, sorry, 2, 0. So it would have, not like, if it, let's say if it was x plus 2 squared. Okay. Would it be on the left side? Yes. Yeah, so now if it's x plus 2, it's actually going to be over here. Okay? And that's because it's contained in the brackets and then it gets squared. So it's actually changing the translation of where that vertex is, or the position. Okay? So to graph y x minus h, translate the graph of x y equals x squares horizontally h units. So that's why if h, it's if, if it looks like this, x plus 2 squared, if you think about it then, if that's the equation, in this particular case, h is actually equal to negative 2 to agree with that equation. Does that make sense? Because it would be x minus minus 2 squared. That's why it's x plus 2. So h in this case is negative 2. So you translate it to the right. It's a little bit confusing, but I think you guys will get the hang of it uh, just with a bit of practice, okay? So minus 2 means it moves to the right two units. Positive 2, it moves to the left. Okay? Uh, if h is greater than 0, then the graph is translated h units to the right. If h is less than 0, then the graph is translated h units to the left. So again, that looks like it's going in the proper directions. But remember, because the equation involves a negative h here, that's why we get that whole reverse situation. So it's saying if h is positive, then the graph is translated to the right. But that's only because in the equation, if h is positive, it'll show a negative h value. That make sense? A little bit confusing, but if you think about it, just it goes the opposite way from the equation to the graph. And from the graph back to the equation, it's going to change signs. I think you guys will get the hang of it. Just a bit of practice. Okay, any other questions with translations? Okay, we'll stop there.